Hello everybody, this is Paul Campbell from MakeCNCWorkshops.com. Today I'm going to give you a short tutorial on how to use the MakeCNC Scale Calculator in conjunction with the free drawing program Inkscape. You can download Inkscape, uh, just Google it, Inkscape, it's, it's, it's totally free and open source and it is quite a powerful drawing uh, software that is not unsimilar to Corel Draw and its functions, although its learning curve is a little different and I found it slightly more difficult to to work with but um, still very good and very powerful and it's free that's the most important thing um, something else I want to mention is the new addition of laser curve uh, where you could add in a figure to adjust your scaling for the lasers curve if you're not sure what laser curve is let me try and explain it quickly if I had a part that I wanted to make, say a 4 inch uh, square, and I wanted to cut that out of a piece of plywood, and I was doing that with a CNC router, then uh, the tool path would make the edge of the tool on the CNC router machine on the outside of the vector line of that square. So that at the end, when I cut it out and I pick my part up and I measure it with a pair of calipers, I've got a part that's exactly 4 inches by 4 inches. This doesn't work the same way for a laser. What a laser does is puts the line in the center of its beam. So it machines along the cent with the line in the center of the beam. So half of the width of that beam, too much is taken off of your part so that when you go to measure your part when you're done if you hadn't taken into account an offset for that laser's curve then you're going to have a figure slightly smaller than four inches around which is not ideal so um, and it's a very small amount the, the laser's curve is a very small amount it's only half the width of the focused beam but in actual fact you'll find that if you don't take that into account when you're cutting out parts with our patterns and with other things um, that they won't fit together very well so uh, that's quite a handy new addition. Okay, the next thing I want to tell you about with Inkscape is it doesn't really seem to like DXF files. DXF files are a common standard used by people to uh, share uh, online files that uh, people want to use with CNC stuff. So uh, I'm not going to go into why and the hows, but they seem to have not got it right, and it seems to crash the program in most cases when you're trying to bring in DXF files. So uh, what I did find is that SVG, Scalable Vector Graphic Files, do seem to import OK and maintain the layers, which is important, uh, into Inkscape. And so in this case, we're going to use uh, a Scalable Vector Graphic, SVG, file for our demonstration. So I'm just going to go up to File, Import and uh, I'm going to bring in this bison here which has quarter inch slots, 0.25 inch slots and open. Now as you can see the uh, parts are all grouped together if I click away like that and then I click back on they're still grouped together so if you're going to want to um, separate these parts out and lay them out specifically for the size of your laser after you've finished doing your scale calculations it's very simple you just need to right click and then ungroup those those parts and you'll be able to do that but for now we we'll keep them all grouped together because that's what we need and we're going to move those up onto the page for our purposes here and what I'm going to want to do is show you the size of a slot. So if I come in here and then I go over here to the measure tool and I come in and I click on the first node and then I drag it across to the second node and let go, you can see it says 0 0.25 inches. Okay, now if you can't see that, if that's really small, I noticed when I came in it was little wee tiny fonts, I couldn't see them. Go over here and, and raise your font size up. If you can see up here in the top left corner there, and bring them up big enough for you to be able to see what's going on. As I say, I'm not too familiar with this piece of software. It took me a little while to figure that one out, but I did get it figured out. And uh, so there we go. We can see 0.25. In the case of this particular pattern, our slots are uh, 
uh, imperial, their inch. So we also want to make sure that we set our units to inches. So you can see up the top here, set our units to inches. You have other options if you're using, you're in the UK or other countries that use metric, you can set them to millimeters if you're importing metric files. And you can also see X, Y, W, and H. X and Y are the position of all of those parts on the page. And the W and H is the width and the height of all of the parts as a group. So I'm going to hold down my shift key now, press on my uh, zoom tool here, hold down my shift key, and that's going to allow me to zoom out. There we go. And then I'm going to go back up, select my pick tool, and I've got all of those parts grouped, and that's giving me a figure up here in my W and H, but that's the width and the height, the width and the height, sorry, of all of those parts together. Also, just here, there's a little lock. Now, it's important that you make sure that that lock is on with and closed, because what that does when the lock is on and closed is it links those two figures together so that when, oh, sorry, it links the, the width and the height together so that when you adjust the scale or you change a figure in here, it uniformly scales everything together. So it won't just it won't scale just in one direction. All right, so now we're going to bring up our scale calculator and we're going to say, all right, we've got a starting point of 0.25 inches. 0.250, that's the thickness that those slots are set for now in the pattern. Now we measure our material, let's say our material was 0.28, that's our actual thickness of the plywood that we've bought from our manufacturer. And we'll put it into there, 0.28. We want the new scale to be 0.280 of the uh, slot size here. And then we have to come up to our width here. We just go in there and select that. And we're going to go Control C. And that's going to copy that to our clipboard. We'll bring our scale calculator back up. We will get that to a zero. And then we go Control V. And that pastes that figure in. Then we hit Calculate. And I've got this set to Copy, which means that the contents of what I calculated is going to copy to the clipboard. And I have the radio button set on for Vetric Coral users, new value width and X. I've got that radio button selected, so that means that it took the sum of the calculation and stored it in the clipboard from that choice. Okay, so back we come to our drawing and we go up to the here and we click in. Oops, we need to select our drawing there, sorry. We click in here and then we backspace all that stuff out and then we control V. And that's the new calculation. And we press enter. And I think I just turned the lock off. Hmm. Okay. So we're going to go back here, edit. We're going to undo transform. And we're going to lock that. And then we're going to do that whole process again. Control V. Ah, and this time. It did it right. So I actually left that mistake in this video so you can see what happens if you make the mistake. See how I distorted it to the right and uh, didn't get it right because I didn't have that lock on. That's why that lock is so important. And now I've turned that lock on, we should have a correct calculation. Okay, so let me now come up to this slot and have a little look-see here. Measure. And there we have it, 0.28 inches. So now all of the slots in that drawing are going to be rescaled to 0.28 inches. I didn't put in the laser kerf. You can do that uh, when you know exactly what your laser's kerf is. And it will be, it'll adjust it by that amount as well. But there it is, folks. It's fairly simple, fairly easy to, uh, to do. And um, I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial and got some good information out of it and uh, we'll see you in the next one thanks for now
Thank <laughs> you.